Welcome back to We Are C. Today we're going to be talking all about LiPo batteries. We're going to talk about the do's and don'ts of charging them, storing them, and in general just how to make them last as long as possible. So let's get to it. So LiPo batteries are the RC industry standard for the best power, runtime, and overall performance. But because of that, if you've ever purchased one, you know that they can be pretty expensive. And if not cared for properly, they can easily be damaged and they're potentially very dangerous. So let's first talk about some details related to the batteries, some of the numbers that you're going to see listed on them. We will have our battery capacity, which is usually rated in milliamp hours. This specific one is rated at 5,200 milliamp hours. We're also going to have our cell configuration. This specific one is a 3S or 3 cell. We're going to have our battery voltage with a 3S battery. It's 11.1 .1 volts. And we're going to have our discharge rate listed which our discharge rate on this specific battery is 80C. So let's first talk about cell configuration. Most RC cars and trucks are going to run on a 2S or higher. Two cell, three cell, four cell, five cell, six cell, uh, up to eight cell, although your 6S and 8S cars are typically two separate 3S or 4S batteries. Now, each cell has a nominal voltage of 3.7 volts. So, depending on how many cells you have, that determines your battery voltage. So, we'll talk about battery voltage then. That's the other number that we listed. A uh, single cell battery is a 3.7 volt. A two cell is 7.4 volt. Three cell is 11.1 .1 volt. Four cell is 14.8 volts. And it continues on. Uh, 6S would be 22.2 volts and 8S 29.6 volts. So next let's talk about battery capacity. That's usually the largest number that you're going to see on your battery. This specific one is 5200 milliamp hours and basically that indicates how much power the battery can hold. Now capacity usually is uh, corresponds with the amount of runtime that you can have before you need to recharge your battery. Although the higher uh, a battery uh, milliamp hour rating, the heavier it is. So of course the weight of that battery affects your runtime as well. Now let's talk about discharge rate because this is probably the most confusing number and on this specific battery this is an 80C. So discharge rate simply tells you how fast a battery can be discharged safely. So the higher the number, the faster it can be discharged safely. So that's going to give you more speed and more power quickly, but then of course the battery will die faster. If you have something like a 25C discharge rate, your battery charge will last a lot longer uh, but your discharge rate won't be quite as, as fast, so you won't get quite as much power or performance out of that battery. So it just depends on your use, how long you need it to stay charged. Typically, a higher number discharge rate is used for a race application versus a, a long, longevity application of trail riding, uh, bashing, or whatever the case may be. You're going to want a lower discharge rate battery. Next, let's look at the type of connections that you can get with batteries. Traxxas, in specific, has a proprietary plug end, which has the balance leads built into it, and they're branded as the Traxxas ID batteries, all in one connection, which typically has to be charged using a Traxxas ID charger. However, there are ways around that, which we'll discuss in a few minutes. Then you may have a battery that has, of course, your main power connection and a separate balance lead. 
And for that, you're going to need a different type of charger. So next we'll talk about types of chargers. Again, if you're a Traxxas fan, you know that they have their own proprietary chargers, the Traxxas ID chargers. And the benefit of that is, of course, that it's just one plug. The Traxxas ID batteries plug directly into the main port. It can sense how many cells that battery has, and it automatically charges it without you having to mess with the settings. It's good because it's easy, but it doesn't give you as much flexibility in charging options. Then you'll have a universal uh, balanced battery charger, typically something like this one. This is an HTRC charger. I uh, picked it up on Amazon. I'll put a link in the description for this specific charger. This is a single battery charger. It has a, a nine or 10 different leads on it for the main plug for the battery. So whether you're running Traxxas, Deans, etc., for the plug ends, you have that right here. And then of course you have your separate lead for your balanced charger. Now the advantage to a charger like this is that you can set your settings of how many amps you want to charge your battery. You can select between your types of charges, discharge, and so forth. It gives you a lot more flexibility, but with that of course requires a lot more training and know-how so that you can safely charge your batteries. Now there are some checks and balances built into a charger like this so that you can't accidentally charge a battery in the wrong setting, but the Traxxas chargers uh, are fairly foolproof. You can't set them to the wrong setting uh, without going into the advanced menu, which we'll talk about in a few moments. So as a rule of thumb, when charging a battery that has a separate balance lead, you would never want to charge that battery at a rate greater than 1C or 1 times the capacity of the battery in amps. So what that means is with this specific battery, this is a 5200 milliamp hours or 5.2 amps. So when charging this battery, we would set the charger at a charge rate of no more than 5.2 amps. Of course, you can charge it at less amperage than that, but it will just take much longer to charge. Let's also talk about charging. You should never fast charge your battery. I know most chargers are going to give you that capacity. Even the proprietary Traxxas chargers are going to give you the option of balance, fast charge, or storage, but never fast charge a battery. If you find yourself in a situation where you are needing to fast charge batteries because you're out of batteries, simply buy more batteries. The reason that I say that is fast charging your battery greatly decreases its lifespan and therefore is going to lead you to having to purchase additional batteries anyway. So buy them now, always charge on balance mode. That's going to make your batteries last as long as possible. The next item related to charging your batteries is when you're finished with a battery and it's dead, make sure that you always charge it up to storage charge level. Never leave a LiPo battery sitting dead. Even if you think you're going to use it in a day or two, I always recommend charge that battery to a storage charge, whether you're using a Traxxas charger or any of your other balanced chargers, they're going to give you the option of storage mode. Charge that battery to storage mode, and then when you're ready to use it, it'll take probably 15 or 20 minutes uh, to bring it from storage mode up to a full balanced charge. Which, by the way, uh, if you're going from completely dead to completely charged on a balanced charge, expect that to take 45 minutes to an hour to charge. So if you're running out of batteries and you're, you're going through a one battery pack every 20 or 30 minutes, you may need three or four battery packs if you always want to have one charged. Because by the time the first one dies and you plug it in to charge, you could go through three packs over the course of the hour that it might take you to charge one additional one. Now, something that's really going, going to help you is to get some sort of battery charge indicator or system. In this specific case, since we're running Traxxas plug-ins, 
Traxxas makes a charge indicator set. It's fairly inexpensive. Again, we'll put the link for that product number in the description. But there are gray ends, there are blue ends, and there are green ends. The gray is designed to signify that that battery is dead. The blue indicates that that battery is in storage mode. And the green, of course, indicates that that battery is fully charged. So again, if you're running, perhaps at the track or out bashing, you kill your battery, put a gray plug end in it or some other system that you've developed to indicate that that battery is dead as opposed to just throwing it back in the bag. Then when you get back, charge it up to storage charge and put your storage charge indicator on there so that you know what level it's at. And then when you charge it, put your green indicator in there and then throw it in your bag and you'll know that that one is ready to go. Now, never leave a battery fully charged more than a day or two. Uh, if you charge it and you don't use it, then you need to think about discharging that battery back down to storage level. Now that's one area that you can't do easily with the Traxxas proprietary charger. It only gives you the option to balance charge, fast charge, and storage charge versus a universal um, balanced charger gives you the ability to discharge a battery. So if you've charged it, it ends up you're not going to use it and you don't want to just run your vehicle to run it out, then you could discharge the battery back down to storage level with this charger. And that's where the adapters that they make for the Traxxas ID batteries could come in handy. It would allow you to uh, put, it's an adapter that plugs into the Traxxas ID connector and then it splits it out into the main Traxxas plug and then a separate balance lead which would then allow you to plug it into a generic balance charger. Now one other thing though is that if you have a battery that has a separate balance lead, you can in fact charge this at least 2S and 3S. It depends on what Traxxas ID charger you have. But there is a little cover here on the bottom of the charger. You can remove that little cover and that will allow you the separate port to plug in your balance lead for your battery. Now the additional trick with this method though is that you have to put your charger into uh, the advanced charging mode to be able to do it this way. And to do that, you push and hold the two bottom buttons until it beeps. That'll put it into advanced charging mode. But again, it's somewhat automated. So at that point, you really can only push start or stop. Depending on what port you plug into, this charger only does 2S or 3S. The charger knows how many cells that battery has and it automatically charges it to that level. All right guys, a few more do's and don'ts for you. Never leave your battery charging unattended. Uh, as we mentioned, LiPo batteries can be dangerous because of the chemical reaction that takes place with them, especially if they're in a very low state. So never leave them unattended and always charge them inside in a fireproof or explosion proof bag such as this one. They're very inexpensive. Again, we'll put a link to ones uh, from Amazon in the video description. But simply put your battery in the bag, have the leads sticking out, plug it into your charger, and again, still don't want to leave it unattended. If you want to see the reason that you do this, there's tons of videos on YouTube about people's garages catching on fire because they left the batteries unattended, they shorted out, the battery caught on fire and exploded. I don't have one of those videos because I always charge them in a bag. Once you have them fully charged, uh, if you want to store multiple ones, uh, or take them with you, uh, whether you're going to a track or so forth. Get yourself, a, again, a fireproof and explosion proof bag to transport all of your batteries in. But just always keep them stored in either a bag like this, or they even have cabinets that are fireproof and explosion proof cabinets. Just a few other tips uh, before we end the video. Transporting batteries, uh, make sure that you never put a battery uh, like in a rooftop carrier in the summer, that excessive heat will damage the battery. Uh, preferably when you're transporting them, keep them inside the car in a heated and conditioned space. Even in the winter, getting too cold can damage the battery. 
but also storing your batteries in general terms. Uh, if you keep them in the garage, monitor the temperature in the garage. You never want them to get over 100 degrees or that could uh, damage them as well. And obviously guys, if you ever start to see your LiPo battery uh, start to get puffy, it's time to replace that battery. Recycle it, get rid of it. Um, if it starts to get puffy like that, there's a very good chance that it could catch on fire or and explode. You really don't want that happening inside your vehicle. Uh, it's, you know, you're talking about maybe a, a $75 or $100 battery, but if it catches on fire when it's in your truck that you've spent hundreds or thousands of dollars on, now your catastrophe has gotten even greater. So uh, I know they're expensive, but if you see one that gets swollen or puffy, go ahead and replace it. Well guys, that's all we have for you today on LiPo batteries. If you have any questions, please leave a comment. We'll get back to you. Uh, please apply some of the things that you learned today. Again, the LiPo batteries are a great source of power for our RC uh, toys, but they can be dangerous. So make sure you charge them properly. That will greatly extend the lifespan of them, give you probably years of excellent service. So hopefully you found these tips to be beneficial. If you did, please subscribe to the channel. We have a lot more great content headed your way. Thanks so much for watching, and that's how we RC.